I watched Birdman on the flight back from Japan the other day. I fucking love that movie. And um, there's, this, there's, a, there's a bit in it where Michael Keaton says, um, I feel like this play is a tiny deformed version of myself that follows me around with a tiny little hammer hitting me in the balls. And that's how, and I like burst out laughing. And that's how I feel when we're making the record. <laughs> Self-producing, like a rumba. <laughs> okay, so this is the first self-produced Foles album. I think we kind of settled on that as a, as a band quite naturally. I think we all felt that it was time to do that. I'd sort of been encouraging Yanis to do it anyway, because I know he's quite a capable young man. This time around, we did it ourselves, and it's, it's quite scary. You know, one thing that is quite obvious is it took us a lot longer than any other record. I guess recording time and writing time of, you know, about 10 months. So basically, I, I had belief that like Yanis could lead the production of this record, but I think him knowing how much work he already has, I think at the beginning he didn't want to commit to that because, well, because it's a huge fucking job. He has to tread a very difficult line between being one, currently one quarter of the band, and playing guitar, but also being the guy who's responsible for the finished product. I mean, when you're already writing all the lyrics, um, doing all the guitars, a lot of a lot of keys and bass on this record. He's been working very hard, I know that much, and I think he's been tearing his hair out quite a bit. doing what he loves, basically. Like he wants, he wants to come in here at nine in the morning and leave at two in the morning. So there you So I was slightly concerned just about like knowing how intense it can get making a false record um, and the pressure on it and then added to that was this um, desire that came from Jack really initially about self-producing. You know that turned out to be a really good idea but I was definitely apprehensive about it because I think when you are working on a record a lot you're confronted with these aspects of yourself and there's a lot of yourself in it. There's been this itch that's needed scratching for a while and, that, and that's what we've done on this record which is to kind of try and see what it's like working with less external interference. I think just taking the producer out meant that it was a kind of more pure vision. It was a lot of work, particularly like in the latter stages where the decisions really defined how the track would be in those last few months. I started drinking a lot and not sleeping much. Maybe we should do this one without the gliss thing, so just come in at the top note. I lose you in degrees, don't leave me on my knees. I lose you in degrees, don't leave me on my knees. i
time, how can I persevere? No point wasting my time, how can I persevere? Yeah, that's it. I like not working with a producer. Um, because I'm a control freak, basically, so I think that, uh, that, that, I enjoyed that. <laughs>